Making your money work for you should be as simple if it's one pound you're managing or a million pounds. And the key thing is making it automatic where possible. Now, I think money is just a resource to actually be used in our life. We want to design life on our terms. This philosophy has allowed us to get out of 25,000 pounds worth of consumer debt to a multiple six figure business on the side of day jobs as well. So I know these principles can really help you as well. And if you're like me and you want that snapshot of all the vital information in your life, knowing where your investments are, your savings, and you're on track for your goals, I think this video is gonna be really useful for you. So the first couple of tools we're talking about are actually spending money smarter. Yes, you are allowed to spend your money as part of this structure. And if you have been watching my channel for a long time, you'll know that I believe we should be spending well, saving well, investing well, and even giving well. I believe it's the four pillars we should all have in our money management system. Now there's some great apps out there and some great tools as well. And what I mean for this is actually spending smarter by knowing where your money is being spent. I call it a spending plan rather than a budget and it's actually saying okay I want to at the start of every month know that this amount is going here this amount is going here and so on so you can do a couple of things such as setting up sinking funds these kind of mini saving pots where every month you're actually actively saving towards a bigger goal or it can simply be writing a budget down so if you've never had a budget before this is one of the easiest things that you can implement it's actually a way to know what's coming into your house and then seeing ideally how you want to spend it. And when you do this at the first of the month or in preparation for your paycheck arriving, what you do is you set yourself up for success based on the goals that matter to you. You're not waiting for emotions and decisions to be made during the month as you're spending. You're entering it brand new, knowing that you've hit your savings goal, knowing that you've invested, knowing that you've gave some money away and all the priorities in your life. And for us, there's some great tools as well that actually allow you to see how are you spending during the month. So for example, I've been using the app Emma to actually track where is my money going. So it's an app that you can dial in your bank accounts to even your investment investment accounts and your credit cards and it will say okay you bought from here Morrison's or Amazon and actually categorize your spending so there's some great tools such as Emma and you need a budget that you can actually track manually how much you're spending every single month and it'll also give you notifications to say wait a minute do you want to be spending on Amazon again today it's time to curb it back and another feature you might have seen in some banks like Starling Bank they actually give you these savings pots that you can create so within your saving or your main account Account, you can actually say okay I want to set up a separate area that's out of the way that I can put towards saving goals perhaps holidays or for bills or perhaps any other luxuries that you want to save up for as a goal you can actually move money to it and you won't see it from your main current account there's a lot of great features that allow you to then dive into how you're spending your money and also be mindful of what you want to spend in future now I'll mention here as well my spreadsheet so it's the money stacks method spreadsheet you will see me mention in a couple of videos and it was a tool that we designed so that we could track that spending plan every single month it was really the key to us getting out of debt very quickly in about three years we went from twenty-five thousand pounds worth of debt right to being in positive income and it was because at the start of the month we told our money where to go using a spreadsheet and then we were able to track it with a couple of different bank accounts it really is as simple as that start to be mindful and start to use some of these apps out there to set up a spending report or a budget and that you know are you're going to be spending your money as smart as it can be. Another great thing to do is to go old school if you like and one of the ways I consistently manage our money is by having a budget template. Now for me I prefer using spreadsheets as you know for a couple of years now I've been talking to you and showing you about our spreadsheet system that we developed. It's called the Money Stack System. It's on Etsy. There's always a link down below if you fancy this at all. But you don't have to of course you can create your own but there's a number of sheets within it that helped me manage our money, our saving, our investing. We paid off debt using it and we also manage how much money is coming to us and then what we do with it as well during a random month. So what I mean by this is when you're trying to get tactile with your money, 
The basics, as we've said, is having a budget. What is coming into your house and how are you spending it? This is the first step to getting control over your money and to make it non-emotional rather than every single week going, oh no, the money's running out. You actually have a plan. You're telling it where to go. You're taking the control back. So a simple place is to do just this. Get a spreadsheet or get a bit of paper and write out your budget using the best estimates you can. Now, if you're self-employed, as we are, what I will do is I'll take my estimated consistent an average wage from the past six months usually. So I tend to lowball this, then if extra money comes our way, it's a blessing and we know what to do with it. But obviously make sure you've got all your essentials and that's the first stack we talk about in the money stacks method. You write down your essentials, the things that keep the lights on and keep food in your belly is the essentials, people who want paid first of the month. Then I also have giving, that's a top priority for us in my system. Financial freedom, so time freedom. How are you going to create incomes that don't require you to actually work for them that's key as well so that's your pensions investments anytime you're thinking about maybe investing in your business as well if you're developing a side hustle you also want your goals in your budget even if it's simply paying off debt if you feel stuck by debt in some way that is a goal put it in your budget. I also encourage people to think about, they're called sinking funds, which are these mini little pots of money. Every single month, you're saving a little portion towards a bigger amount. So it could be as we're gonna talk about yearly bills later on in this video. You know, is it something that you could put by a little amount every single month and then pay off the larger bills, such as your council tax or your insurance or your home insurance or pet insurance or something like that. And then finally, always important for me is this is your life you're designing with your money and we need to address a lot of mindsets when we're managing our money for foremost so I always have fun money and personal development you're meant to have fun with your money you're meant to live it's just making sure we've got all the bases lined up and they all work together so the second way you can manage your money is going back to cash only now that isn't as easy I know right now in current society when we were encouraged to use contactless but there's something very special that happens when you go old school. The way that our grandparents and our great grandparents used to actually record their money, it was all physical and you might have heard of cash envelopes and you can do this obviously with bank accounts still. But what I mean is another step to actually manage your money is to start being mindful of every single time that you're spending outside of that initial budget. So let's say for example with your food money or your petrol money or your fun money, actually take that money physically out and also record where you're spending it. So I do this in a couple of places and I've talked about it on a couple of videos actually having it tactile right written down. You can use a small notebook and I actually, I've just brought this product out. It's a physical planner because some people like physical items rather than a spreadsheet. And I actually have a section where you can track exactly where you're spending your money. So anytime you're spending something, you have to then be accountable to yourself and write it down. And what happens is then as over the course of the month, you're actually going to see your habits change. First of all, there's a barrier in place before you spend. You know you've got to write it down. The second thing, as I say in the planner, is you can actually start to see patterns. You know, is it Amazon that's drawing your attention when actually you don't want to spend really that month, you wanted to put it towards your goals instead? Or is it that you're maybe in the habit of taking lunches to work when we get to the office or getting that coffee? And actually, Actually, that's good but you would rather spend it in other places or maybe just spend less overall one habit that's so easy is food budgets and that's where actually us recording what we're spending puts that barrier in place for me and it's a great tool when you're wanting to get a little bit more streamlined and a little bit more conscious spending with what you're doing now it's based on the principle called kakibo which is a Japanese principle which is a way that they manage their money it just simply is what comes in their goals and then accounting for everything everything that they're spending outside of that. So give that a go if you're struggling. If you're finding money is really tight, actually be accountable for every single penny that you're sending out the door. The third tool you can use to actually spend your money smarter is to focus on, I call it the 80-20 of your money. So when you're using your monthly budget, a lot of your bills and things like that will come out the first of the month usually. So all the essentials, if you like, everyone who wants money from you first, 
that will all be dealt with. Well, it tends to be then your spending day to day for the rest of the month that then influences whether you're in positive cash flow at the end or you're in negative and you're in debt in some way. If you look at the 80-20 principle, it basically says 20% of your spending or 20% of whatever will accumulate to 80% of the success or failure in your life. So in our case, 20% of the places we send our money are going to be 80% of our budget spending. So literally you can apply this principle to your spending and say, what are the two or couple of categories that are actually causing the biggest, the 80% of my success or failure in my budget? And most of the time when you look, it tends to be food bills and it tends to then be everything else, lifestyle choice. Petrol and transport tends to be fixed and even some of your things like monthly subscriptions or clothing or haircuts, they tend to be a bit more rigid that you can predict them. But it's really all about your impulse spending and even more so than your food budget. And so for me, what I do when I'm wanting to be a little bit leaner or just make sure I'm spending my money smarter is look at those two categories. So my food budget I look at and also that impulse spending, extra life things that seem to get in the way. And what I will actually do is give myself a budget in those areas to make active cuts. That means, for example, if I want to reduce my food bill by 25% as a goal, I know that that's going to have a ripple effect in my budget. I'm going to naturally, because I'm attacking the two biggest areas, I'm going to be then left with more money every single month. So for example, if it's your food budget that you want to tackle as your 80-20, you could switch supermarket, you could do meal prepping, you could actually be buying in bulk to try and save money. So do the whole month shopping and determine to use it all up before you go next shopping again. You could decide that you want to do meal prepping and planning that way, so batching ahead. You could even decide that you're going to only buy what you absolutely need for that day or a couple of days at a time so the fridge and freezer is empty before you next go to the shop. Think of ways to cut down your 80-20 within your budget and I assure you there'll be a ripple effect in the rest of your spending as well. Another really good way to focus on spending patterns is also to do cash envelopes or even on your banking app, you can set it up as digital cash envelopes if you like. So individual amounts of money, separate accounts even, where you know I've got a fixed amount and I'm not going over. So if it's your food budget or your impulse spending, you've got a set amount, maybe £100 a month, and you know you cannot go over. And it'll then allow you to physically see how much you're tapping or paying over every single week. And be more mindful when you are making those decisions. It's about another little barrier in place to make sure that you actually want to spend this way based on your goals ahead. So now we're going to talk about tools to actually grow your money. Now all the tools I'm going to mention here you can make automatically in your budget and your spending every single month. So if you've applied the first couple of principles to your money and tools that could help, this is going to be excellent for you. So one of the easiest things to do to grow your money to give you time freedom, which is another great habit, is actually to think about investing and making your money multiply. So we're essentially, when we're investing, giving our money to companies or different commodities in the belief that that will grow in value over time. It's not get rich quick. We don't believe we're going to flip it around in a day or two. The point is long term, we're buying things where we believe in the future we can sell for a profit. Now, the one way to do that is obviously investments. And I talk about index funds mainly because index funds are a way to get into the stock market and buy one thing, but actually buying a whole host of different companies. It's not just like picking Pepsi or Tesla. It's like you're buying hundreds, if not thousands of companies. So that way, if one maybe suffers, another one will replace it and be, it's called a league table. So usually index funds would be regarded as your top performers in a sector or an industry or a region of the world. Now I'm going to show you, for example, let's say you picked Vanguard. So we've got our investment ISA with Vanguard right now. And one way you could do that on autopilot growing your money is simply to pick an index fund that they offer. So if there's something that you're interested in, you know, investing seems a little bit daunting. You know I cover this on this channel, tons of videos. I even have a course down below that talks you through the basics of investing and actually setting up an investment ISA and those basic essentials. So this could be something that you can do. And the great thing is, you know, with a number of options, for example, that Vanguard offer, they offer blended index funds, which means I'm not only buying one index fund, I'm actually even mixing in bonds, which are a different way of actually buying into stock markets. Well, a little bit more stable, the regard 
rewarded. And so that way you can actually design this that you're building your financial freedom on an autopilot as well. So not only are we using our money to spend it wiser, we're actually now thinking about how can we grow it. And as I say, it can be autopilot. So the first of the month, I have it set up on my investment ISA that money comes out and it goes and buys a certain fund or certain couple of funds for me. I do not need to think. And you can do this with anything. You know, we're talking about pensions. Vanguard offer pensions as well. Or you can have people like Pension B. And just like Vanguard, they have a number of plans. Again, we can first of the month or whenever you decide automatically buy into investments and grow our money for our future. So even for example, if faith-based options are really important to you, I know this is really critical for a lot of you watching maybe in the Muslim community, you can actually have those needs met with your investments as well. That's incredibly important. I want it to be inclusive as possible with these habits. And you know, you can even do things like look at fossil free options with Pension B. So as well as Vanguard, here's another option that we can even think about a retirement money being automatic first of the month and then also we've got options such as investing overall so we talked about investment ISAs you can actually make this part of your money strategy where every single week or month when the paycheck comes in you're saying I want to automatically buy a portion and you can put it into a normal general account or investment ISA for example with free trade and then you're getting to actually make your money grow on autopilot and the best thing is when we use services that set up direct debits or standing or orders to automatically invest as well and grow our money, we're taking the emotion out of it in exactly the same way as the saving and spending options we've talked about. I want you also have options for your investments and your potential money to grow. And next, I want to give you an option for saving a little bit smarter and cutting down your time with actually making things on autopilot yet again in an area of your life. And this is a really great thing if your bank offers it. And I'm talking about this auto save or even an auto invest function when you're actually spending money. So my bank does this, the Bank of Scotland, where if I tap my card, it will then round up the value and move the difference between what I've spent and that rounded up value into a savings account for me. So this is something that's incredibly powerful. Again, if you're really struggling to manage your money and make even small savings, I equate it to kind of that, that little snowflake effect. Your little amounts over time add up to be something greater. There are options with nutmeg and money box as well with investments that you can do the same principle. As you're spending your money, it goes, would you like me actually to round this up and I'm going to invest that for you. A really great way to be saving but also growing your money on autopilot. So check out your bank as well. Is this something you could use? Set it up and then every time you're spending, you don't even have to think about saving. It's doing it for you. And finally, the last tool for making your money much easier to manage is simply automate as much as you possibly can. So what we did when we started our money management journey, trying to get out of the debt, we made a couple of things automatic. The first thing was we decided how much we were going to pay off debt every single month. That was going to come out at the first of the month. I then set up every other habit we wanted the first of the month that had to come out. All the essentials were paid, all the bills were paid, so we still had a roof over our head, but we also wanted to save, start to invest and give. And so for us, that then left a little bit of money left over for the rest of the month that we had to micromanage. But setting up the priorities first and without emotion evolved, not really relying on we, us actually having to put aside money as we're going along took a lot of the brain power out of things and I believe it was one of the reasons why we actually paid off the debt far quicker. Everything was automatic. I didn't need to think about sending money to debt. What I could actually do was money came in on top and then put extra towards it. So think about all the things that you can make automatic in your life with your money. Is it your investments? Can you set up a direct debit so that it goes to Vanguard or Trading 212 on the first of the month as well? What about your savings? Make it a standing order, move that money across or move it over to your sinking fund on the first of the month. What about even think about paying off credit cards if you have any in full every month? The habit that you want, that will really put a fear in you so that you want to ensure that anything on your credit card you know you have money for. You can set that up as well. So look at all the different areas where you could automate your life so that the true decisions, the daily decisions that you want to make with your money about what you want to buy 
right and bring into your life. It's not then clouded by all these other decisions such as having to save or invest or pay off your debt that you want to do anyway. And another really great automation step is to think about some of the monthly bills you could actually pay with yearly amounts. Now often you will save a good chunk of money, maybe five, 10% if you went from a monthly direct debit to actually paying it off in full once a month. The next thing you do is you obviously free up money during the year in theory because you haven't actually had to put aside that money every single month. So perhaps you want to save or invest that money instead whilst also building up a sinking fund for that extra money to cover the one-off bill. So it's a great also mindset trick that if you keep your budget as lean as possible during the year while saving up for these bigger bills, that then means again, the decisions you need to make over your money are actually kept to the time rather than thinking every single month, I need to pay off that bill, I need to be something that I need to do right away. So thank you so much for watching today. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you have, why not check out this similar video right here and also you can hit subscribe and follow my channel and all my videos we talk about lots of things here all to do with money and your financial success so please do stick around thank you so much for watching today i'll see you very soon